Okay, so this is sort of an old video that I'm editing up right now because I've got nothing else to do. So in this video, we're going to synthesize some phenyl isonitrile. Why? It smells bad. And now this is basically just rhodonite synthesis by scaled down by a lot. So we're going to use 0 0.93 grams of, um, what was it, uh, aniline, yes. Uh, 1.8 grams of sodium hydroxide and 1.2 grams of chloroform. And, um, yeah, the original plan was to make a large batch of this and then distill it down to get the pure phenyl isonitrile, because I wanted to see how bad it could possibly be. But, um, yeah, after doing this pilot scale run, it smelled horrible. So anyway, I was just going to dissolve each of these things in an ethanol solution. Unfortunately, I made the solution wrong, so there was not enough ethanol in it, so I ended up adding more ethanol to each of them. The reaction we are performing is known as a isonitrile synthesis, or Hoffman isonitrile synthesis, where through the magic of chloroform and sodium hydroxide, we can turn an amine into a isonitrile. Uh, I'll go into the mechanism a bit more in depth later, i.e. me posting on screen because I'm too lazy to explain it. But yeah, so we're just going to dissolve all of this in chloroform, not chloroform, we're going to dissolve in ethanol, and we're just going to mix it together and bring it up to a bit of heat and we will be done with the synthesis. It's really simple. Now, apparently Lab Coats is going to make a video on isonitriles as well, so yeah. Oh well, I'm not going to pursue it any further because it smells horrible and I do not want to know what ungodly things I could make. So here's me adding a bit more ethanol to each of the solutions because they didn't dissolve properly because there's not enough ethanol. This in the end did not seem to harm anything, so yeah, it's just a solvent. Shouldn't be too worried about it. Uh, the only reason I think ethanol is used is because otherwise the aniline would not mix in properly. So we're just going to combine these solutions and give it a good stir. The sodium hydroxide dissolution is actually enough for the heat to be generated for it to already smell. So there's a tiny bit of smell. It's rather peculiar. It's like cancer, basically. It smells cancerous. I don't know how that... I don't know what that would mean, but yeah. Uh, you can see here some sodium chloride is already precipitating, but we're going to heat it up anyways. So the smell, I guess the best description would be burning cooking oil because of the acrolein and some, like, seaweed or kelp. But yeah, after a few minutes of heating, here's our final solution. So we're going to decant it off, and here you can see the reaction mechanism. Just replace the alkyl R with a phenyl group instead, and that will be the reaction, basically. So yeah, you can see magic, and then ta-da, we get our phenyl isonitrile. So here's our final analysis of nitrile and ethanol. It's crude, of course. I'm not even going to dare dry it because I do not want to handle it more. This is how bad it is. I put it in a plastic jar in my freezer and it still stinks. That's how bad it is. And the lid itself smells horrible. I regret touching it with my hand. But yeah, this stuff is very potent. I do not want to deal with this ever again. And also, I still have no idea why everything in my fridge is going blue. I literally have no idea, but anyways, that's it for this video. 